Hi, my name is Helen Chersky and I'm a bubble physicist at the University of Rhode Island and today we're going to talk about bubbles and especially bubbles in the ocean. Well, there is one main reason that bubbles form in the ocean and that's breaking waves and you can get bubbles by other methods. So fish produce a small number of bubbles and you can get methane, seeps of gas from the bottom of the ocean and that can produce bubbles too. But the bubbles that are um, most important for the things I'm looking at, the light and the sound in the ocean, are produced in breaking waves. Bubbles affect the light travelling through the ocean and so if you're using, if you're measuring light in an experiment, um, or you're trying to look through the ocean surface, you need to know about those bubbles. The second reason is that they affect the sound in the ocean, the acoustics. And so bubbles um, produce sound by, all by themselves, and they also absorb sound produced by other mechanisms. Um, and so if you want to understand sound, understand sound travelling through the ocean, you need to know about the bubbles. And the third reason, and this is sort of the, the most fashionable one at the moment, is that bubbles are little packets of gas that are being carried down into the ocean. And what happens when you carry those little packets down is that the gas gets squeezed out and dissolves into the ocean. So things like carbon dioxide and oxygen um, from the air, from the atmosphere, can get carried down into the ocean via the bubbles, if you like, um, and that's really important when it comes to understanding how the ocean and the atmosphere link together uh, to control climate and weather. This is just uh, tonic water and it's transparent. We can't, can't see anything in there, but you open it up. <laughs> suddenly it goes opaque. And the reason it goes opaque is that all of those little bubbles suddenly appeared in there and they bent the light and scattered it in lots of different directions. So suddenly, instead of light being able to travel straight through, light was bouncing off all those little interfaces um, in the bubbles and uh, changing where the light went. And so that's the sort of thing that's really important if you're looking at light in the ocean because you might assume that light would go straight through in a straight line, but if there are bubbles in the way, that changes where the light goes and what the ocean looks like. So if you're trying to understand where the light goes in the ocean, it's really important to know about the bubbles, especially the small ones. So bubbles produce a lot of sound, actually, especially when they're formed, and we hear it all the time, but you probably might not have thought about it being the bubbles that were producing the noise. Um, and what I'm going to do here is blow down the straw and what will happen then is that a, a, um, lots of bubbles will be produced at the straw, one after the other. And every bubble that's produced will produce a little ping. And the ping that it makes is related to the size of our new bubble. Um, so here we go, listen to the noise. So if you try this at home, uh, what you'll be able to hear is that the noise produced is a series of pop, 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 pop and each pop represents one bubble. The reason for this video is to demonstrate how bubbles of different sizes make pings of different notes. And so what I had was a, an, a bottle full of water and I held it in the ocean, this was in Curacao actually, last summer, and um, I made bubbles by squeezing the bottle, so lots of small bubbles came out one by one. And you can hear that the Ping, you can hear the note of the ping as each bubble comes out. And then I took a bigger bubble with a wider neck and I made big bubbles and you can hear immediately that the bubbles, that the note produced is much lower. Um, and you can also see that as the bubbles, uh, so when the bubbles start to come out of the bottle, they're going quite slowly, so they're a little bit smaller. But as they get going, as, you know, as the process gets going, the bubbles get bigger. So you can actually hear that as the bubbles get bigger, the note goes down. So one of the reasons that gas goes into the ocean is pressure. A gas bubble, um, as I said, is very squashable. So if you squeeze a bubble, more of the gas inside it will go into the water around it. And the converse also happens so that um, if, you, if there is dissolved gas in a liquid and that liquid is squashed and suddenly you release the pressure, all the gas in there can come out and form bubbles. Um, and this happens in the ocean both ways around. And so we see this again with fizzy drinks, so this is just, uh, I think this one's lemonade. And the way that fizzy drinks work is that they're very highly pressurised. They've already got gas inside them. The pressure is very high. And when I undo the lid, what's going to happen is that um, the, this gas space in the top has suddenly become atmospheric pressure. So the liquid at the moment is really, really squeezed. And what's going to happen is that all that squeeze is going to be released, and we'll see what happens. 
<laughs> good at this. <laughs> And so what you could see is that all that gas that was uh, trapped inside there could suddenly escape and bubbles could suddenly be formed. Um, and so that's what happens if you decrease the pressure. But equally in the ocean, if you have a bubble and it's carried down really deep, that's increasing the pressure and that bubble will be squeezed out of existence because all of that gas will just go straight into solution. And this is, this is a, an effect that's really important when it comes to gas that comes from the atmosphere into the ocean and goes back the other way.